India's done some pretty impressive stuff with rockets in space, despite having limited resources and a tight budget. Like the legendary PSLV rocket, considered one of the best rockets ever built. This rocket once launched 104 satellites in one go. In 2008, it carried Chandrayaan-1, which found water on the moon. And in 2014, it pulled off the Mars Orbiter mission, making India the fourth country to reach Mars, and the first on its maiden attempt. And the most recent launch of PSLV was the Aditya L1 mission aimed at studying the Sun. The spaceship will be put in a halo orbit around the Sun-Earth system's Lagrange Point 1, which is about 1.5 million kilometers from Earth. PSLV is considered the workhorse for ISRO, due to its consistent delivery of various satellites to low Earth orbits. Interestingly, due to its unmatched reliability, PSLV has also been used to launch various satellites into geosynchronous and geostationary orbits. However, PSLV does have its limits in terms of payload capacity. So, ISRO has its own rocket that can carry even bigger payloads. This is the GSLV Mark III, or LVM-3. The rocket is considered the most powerful rocket India has, but it wasn't meant to compete in carrying capacity with rockets from the US, China, and Russia. Instead, it was all about following the principle of PSLV, like cutting costs, while still getting the job done efficiently. With seven straight successful launches, including the most recent one, that took the 3.9-ton Chandrayaan-3 spacecraft to the moon, the rocket has proven to be reliable. However, a rocket like the LVM-3 is good, only up to a point, because, it is not designed for super long distances or insane speeds. Instead, the rocket's job is to carry the Chandrayaan-3 spacecraft to the drop-off point around 180 kilometers above the Earth, also called Earth Parking Orbit. After that, the spacecraft takes control and executes a series of maneuvers including orbit-raising maneuvers, uses Earth gravity assists, and performs a translunar injection burn to increase its energy and trajectory, ultimately enabling it to depart from Earth and head towards the Moon. This process also ensures precision and allows for safety checks as well, and the process is very cost-effective. It is one of the reasons why the Chandrayaan-3 mission costs so little However, this process is also very slow. For example, the Russian Luna 25 mission was launched 27 days after Chandrayaan-3 managed to reach the moon much earlier due to the Russian rocket's ample payload capacity and propulsion power allowing it to perform the required maneuvers directly. But this doesn't mean that the LVM-3 rocket isn't strong. In fact, the rocket was always designed with potential human spaceflight applications in consideration. The vehicle is capable of placing four-ton class satellites into geostationary transfer orbit. And the powerful cryogenic stage of LVM-3 enables it to place heavy payloads of more than 8,000 kilograms into low Earth orbits at 600 kilometers altitude. The cryogenic upper stage, or C-25 stage, is India's largest cryogenic engine, designed and developed by the Liquid Propulsion Systems Center. LVM-3 uses two S-200 solid rocket boosters, to provide the huge amount of thrust, required for liftoff. The L-110 liquid stage, is powered by two Vikas engines, was also designed and developed locally. As I mentioned earlier, all seven launches of the LMV-3 rocket have been successful. The first launch was in December 2014, when LMV-3 carried an experimental crew module for the ISRO orbital vehicle for a crew mission in space. The launch vehicle's first commercial launch of British satellites for OneWeb, containing 36 satellites, occurred on October 22, 2022, 
which helped India enter the global market for heavier payloads. In 2023, another 36 satellites for the same company were launched successfully. But the biggest mission that LMV-3 will see is India's first crewed mission to space. The Gaganyaan project aims to demonstrate India's human spaceflight capability by launching a crew of three members into a 400 km orbit for a three-day mission with a safe return to Earth by a landing in Indian seawaters. Critical technologies required for the Gaganyaan mission include a human-rated launch vehicle, life support systems, crew emergency escape provisions, and crew management aspects for training, recovery, and rehabilitation. The vehicle will be equipped with a crew escape system powered by quick-acting, high-burn-rate solid motors to ensure crew safety in case of emergencies at the launch pad or during ascent. The orbital module consists of the crew module and the service module. Crew module is a habitable space with an Earth-like environment for the crew. It features double-walled construction, life support systems, avionics, and deceleration systems. It's designed for safe re-entry during descent. Service module provides support to the crew module while in orbit containing various systems like thermal, propulsion, power, and avionics. India needs larger rockets and advanced systems, including high-powered rockets and cutting-edge technology. To achieve this, the Indian government has taken a positive step by opening up space activities to private industries. Private companies have demonstrated their capability to design, build, and launch high-performance rockets for various purposes, including satellite deployment, International Space Station resupply missions, and future crewed missions to the Moon and Mars. However, they often build upon or leverage technologies and knowledge developed by government agencies such as NASA. There is no doubt that the Gaganyaan mission will be a major milestone in India's space exploration journey, making India the fourth nation to achieve this feat. But this mission is not only a technology demonstrator, but also a catalyst for new technologies. Once this technology is proven and available, India can explore opportunities such as establishing a space station, creating a permanent human habitat on the moon, promoting space tourism, engaging in asteroid mining, enabling manufacturing in space, enhancing national security, through reconnaissance satellites and early warning systems, developing more powerful launch vehicles, and improving propulsion systems. And private players has the potential to further reduce costs.